Number five is gunplay and inventory. So there needs to be a memory for magazines again. So if you shoot five bullets out of your 30 round magazine and then you reload it later, it has 25 bullets in it. Go figure. If you do a tactical reload when you have 20 shots and you load a full magazine at 30 rounds, then you have 31 rounds in your gun because there was one in the chamber. All this stuff that used to exist back when Ubisoft made tactical shooters. Uh, there should also be a weight system, so the more gear you're carrying, the slower you are, the more noise you're going to make. And I'm not only talking about your walk speed or your run speed or your sprint speed, but it should also have some effect on all your other movements as well. Uh, the enemies need to have inventories, so if you kill an enemy and uh, you know they don't have infinite ammo, so whatever ammo they didn't use is still going to be in their inventory. If they didn't use their frags, they still have some frags you can take off of them, that sort of thing, like an actual tactical shooter would have. The recoil needs to be random and sharp, but you know, not drastic recoil necessarily, just sharp and random so that the player has to actually pay attention to what's going on and not just, oh, I'm shooting the M4, that means I move my mouse down at this speed to the lower left, and now I have no recoil. It needs to be more random, so the player puts thought into their shots, and because of that, the enemies can't be shooting laser beams like they do in Wildlands when they have the twin Uzis shooting lasers. There needs to be sway. There's basically no sway in Wildlands or Breakpoint, but your gun should sway when you're moving or even when you're just standing still. There should be some movement so you can't just have a steady dot on the screen. And then there needs to be overswing and underswing. So if you're using a heavy gun, when you move your mouse, it doesn't just instantly move with you. It takes a second because the gun has some inertia. There's, you're actually moving a heavy gun so it doesn't instantly snap. And, uh, you know, when you stop moving, it overswings a little, and then it corrects itself. Like, oh no, I wasn't trying to swing it that far. I was, you know, realistic stuff that you would experience if you bothered to test anything before adding it into a game. <laughs> the, uh, there needs to be inertia, weight, you know, delay, but perhaps there should also be a max sensitivity. I think there should be a max sensitivity, actually. I'll just say there should be. So if I'm swinging around a 240 Bravo, I'm not going to be able to turn at the same rate that I would be able to turn if I was just using a pistol or just using a MP5. I think that would be the more controversial thing to lock the sensitivity based on the weapon, but that's really what should be happening. Uh, there should also be weapon proficiency based on the platform. If your guy is a specialist in AKs, then he's pretty good with all the AKs, but he's probably going to have, you know, a particular model that he's especially good at, and then all the very similar models, he's also good with those because it's basically the same gun. There should be some armor degradation, so... And I'm not talking about Call of Duty style where you just slap in your five plates in your... I don't know, I haven't played the game, but I've seen it. It looks really stupid. I'm talking about more realistic armor degradations. So, you know, maybe a ceramic plate can take five 762 by 39 shots or whatever. It can take 10 of them, and uh, then you're going to have to replace it because it's all shattered and the next bullet's going to go through you. And uh, camouflage needs to matter. So, gone are the days of Wildlands and Breakpoint where you're wearing all black in the snow or whatever. I guess that kind of could work, but. You know, you're wearing a all white in the jungle and nobody notices you. Or, uh, you know, you're wearing a bright pink shirt and nobody notices you. All that stuff needs to stop. Camo should actually matter. So if you're wearing green camouflage in the jungle or in whatever other biomes, it actually makes you harder to detect, harder to detect than if you're wearing some polar camo or desert camo even. So number six is medical. Not really sure why I put this. Oh, I know why I put this as a must. It's because there needs to be injuries. And not just the breakpoint injuries. You know, there needs to be actual injuries. So you get shot in the leg, then it hits your leg. Not, oh, I got shot in the chest. Now my leg is broken. Not breakpoints garbage. I don't want that. I would maybe even rather no injuries than those injuries. But I definitely want injuries. And, uh... 
the enemies also are gonna need to take injuries. It's really stupid when the enemies don't ever get injured. In Breakpoint they talk about rolling their ankle when they were walking around, but they're never injured. It's really stupid. So enemies need to be injured, player needs to be injured based on shots. Same as the enemy. Uh, hit reactions. There were some good hit reactions and breakpoint and wildlands, but uh, they need to be better. And from what I remember, they weren't necessarily based on the placement of the shot. That would be a great thing to have. So you hit them in the left shoulder and they spin around a bit. Uh, death. There needs to be permanent death. Instead of just having four magical, identical characters that are immortal and all do everything exactly equally. There needs to uh, be some permanent deaths. Then there should be some treatments. So if you're bleeding, you have to bandage up. Maybe a first aid kit to regenerate some health. If you broke a leg, then you're good or whatever. If you got shot in the leg and it shattered, you're gonna need to put a splint on, a cast, whatever. Those soldiers that are injured are going to have to rest up. They're not just going to magically get better, uh, um, you know, unless it's a small injury. And eventually they would get better, but uh, ideally there'd be skeleton and organs. So if you get shot in the heart, you die. If you get shot in the lung, maybe you're almost dead, coughing up blood and stuff. Shot in the brain, you die, but get shot in the jaw and you don't die. That sort of thing. And yes, I know there would be some... Uh, Terminal ballistics aren't as simple as uh, the bullet goes straight through, doesn't do anything, but they can go through. Plenty of people have been shot in the head and survived. Uh, but if you're not going to do skeleton and organ simulation, then there should be some RNG. So it's not, uh, you know, 556 five, does 25 damage per bullet if you hit him in the chest and does 15 damage if you hit him in the limb. None of that stuff. Well, you know what I mean? There should be some randomness to it. So sometimes it does whatever it is, 25, and then some other times it does 30, some other times it does 40, just to make it a little more realistic and less arcadey. And there should be medic instead of everyone being equally as good at treating injuries. There should be a medic, so roles will actually matter, which is related to the next one, number seven, attributes. So they're Ideally, there would be varied inherent maximums, so certain soldiers will have a maximum of 90 for the medical, and other soldiers will have a maximum of 40 for the medical, so they can't get any better than 40 stats, stat points or whatever. And the same thing happens for the minimum, so some guys will come in and they'll be a 50 for medical or a 100 or whatever. Probably not a 100, that would be kind of stupid, but maybe. But, uh, you know, someone's a 70 at their uh, speed or their stamina as a baseline, but they could work their way up to a 95, that sort of thing. And that's going for everyone, too. That's not just the player, that's not just the teammates, that's the enemies as well. So it keeps everyone different, makes everyone uh, more realistic, seems a lot less arcadey, and it should also be based on their status, at least for the enemies. So, you know, maybe the bosses aren't even that good at combat, but they're probably going to be very fit, so they got a lot of stamina and that sort of thing. And the medics are going to be better at healing and whatnot. Um, It'd also be cool if the enemies train, the enemies get better over time. I mean, that works especially well in an open world, but could also work otherwise. So the enemies training is going to be more of a thing for the open world mode, more than the open level campaign. However, I think it could work. So for instance, if the first two missions, or however many you could do sneaking by without ever making any contact, you know, like actual ghosts, you don't shoot anyone, you don't get spotted, that sort of thing. Maybe the enemies aren't going to be as well trained. It's possible, but it's definitely more of an open world thing. Uh, so some of the attributes I can see would be teamwork. So how well they're going to work with their teammates. Leadership is going to be, you know, you get more out of your teammates. So I think the way the first game did it was pretty good. Where everybody's stats increase when, you, when they have a good leader. And that's kind of related to the teamwork thing. Uh, stamina, uh, it's pretty obvious. Strength, it's going to be your carry weight. Maybe some other stuff like uh, 
how quickly you can climb, especially when you have weight. Uh, stealth is going to be how quietly you move, mostly. Maybe it could be combined with, uh, yeah, I guess not really, but uh, <laughs> maybe combined with how quickly the enemy sees you. I don't think it should be, but maybe for the AI. It's uh, demolition, it's going to be how quickly you set up demos, that sort of thing. How quickly you can disarm a bomb. Then there's electronics, so how quickly you hack, maybe some other bombs that require electronic knowledge. How quickly you get information from computers, that sort of thing. Everything related to electronics, how quickly you hack into cameras, whatever. So your speed, so people will have different movement speeds. Uh, I saw it mostly as foot movement, like how fast you're going to run, how fast you'll sprint. Not really walking, that should maybe be a... Everyone walks the same unless they're encumbered, but uh, maybe there could also be s speeds for your ADS and other swapping weapons, etc. Could be a weapon handling stat or whatever. Bravery. So, you know, when you're taking suppressive fire, you're going to be more likely to hit your shots. Obviously, that's more of a AI thing, but I guess it could also be, uh, it could reduce the amount of suppressive effects so your screen doesn't blur as much if you're the player. and that sort of thing, you don't experience as much suppression, and maybe you don't flinch when there's a bullet that cracks by your head, but I guess that's kind of related to this other one I have, which is poise, but I saw that uh, also related to how well you're going to follow commands, so if you're under fire and your commander tells you to move 500 meters to the left, you'll do it if you have a high poise, but if you have a low poise, maybe you're too scared, so you're not going to do it immediately or whatever. I don't know, there's a lot of <laughs> variety to these statistics. Alertness is going to be, you know, how quickly they're calling up, calling out people to you. It's more of a bot thing than a player thing, but, uh, so if they have a high alertness, they're going to be a lot more likely to spot someone or, uh, notice other things as well. Lock picking, obvious enough. Cohesion. Oh, cohesion's a XP multiplier for working with the same fire team. So uh, the more you work with the same people, you get an XP multiplier so that you're going to get more stat points over time. And uh, you'll notice there's no weapon stat, unlike the first game, because it's all going to be about the proficiency. So the more you use a certain type of weapon, the better you get with it. It's not going to be used M4, so now you're an expert with the dragon off. You know, they're all going to be different, so that's going to be based on whatever weapon they use. They're going to get better at that, and uh, very similar weapons as well. You know, the manual of arms, how you all the weapons that reload the same, they'll be a little better at those, but they're going to be a lot better at the one they're using.